Hello and welcome back to Typical City. Not the greatest weekend for Manchester City fans in truth and we didn't even do anything. We just sat here and watched everyone else do their thing and it didn't feel too good in truth. Liverpool won 4-0, Arsenal won 5-0 and Manchester United poached our chief footballing operations officer of the CFG group, Omar Barada, and they've managed to uh, find a lot of joy in such a pretty minuscule bit of uh, news in truth, celebrating it like it actually means something on the pitch, which I can categorically state right now, it absolutely does not. But there is some good news to come out of this weekend, for Manchester City fans in particular, Kevin De Bruyne. Rumours are from Simon Mullock of the Daily Mirror suggesting that Manchester City are prepared to offer Kevin De Bruyne a new contract which is music to the ears of Manchester City fans, no doubt due to the fact that we already know what a wonderful talent he is, an incredible player. I mean, one of the greatest Premier League players we've ever seen, in truth. And... Um, to the idea that he's now signing for Manchester City, we saw him come back and there were little fears from Manchester City fans that he might not be able to hit the ground running. I was one of them. I thought, well, he might take a bit of time to find his feet again. But we saw him come back in the FA Cup against Huddersfield and he looked decent. And then you're thinking, OK, well, that's Huddersfield. That's a championship outfit. What's he going to do in the next game? And he comes on against Newcastle, 2-1 down, and turns the game on his head against Premier League opposition and wipes the floor with Newcastle. Made it look easy. The things that he did on that football pitch in such a short amount of time was frightening for the rest of the Premier League. Ominous was the word for uh, our rival fans, and understandably so. But the news coming that he's now signing a new contract deal is fantastic. But before I go any further into this, I wanted to remind you, I'm sure you all remember this. Who remembers this little clip from the experts at Sky Sports News, Phil Thompson and Paul Merson, and what they once said about the signing back in 2015 of Kevin De Bruyne and the likeliness of how good this signing actually is? Let's have a listen. Let's listen to the experts, shall we? De Bruyne... My goodness, Jeff, you know, the, the world is going mad, isn't it? You look at the amount of money they're paying for this boy, it's just absolutely well, bonkers. Chelsea paid £6.7 million for him. Wolfsburg paid £18 million in January of last year, and now we're talking about 50 odd million pounds. He's a good player, but is he, is he a great player in that respect, you know, <laughs> for what he's done, where he's played? No, Wolfsburg are a good team and they got into the Champions League, but come on. But was Merce, was, um, was Jose Mourinho wrong to let him go? Uh, I didn't think so. I didn't think he'd done it at Chelsea. I don't think he got loads of chances, but he didn't, he didn't look part of the Chelsea way at the time, Jeff. And I think it was right for him to go. I was. I mean, no, if you're big, buying someone... Got big fee for Yeah, if you're buying someone for £8 that million, well. and you're selling them for £10 million profit, I mean, it's a no-brainer for me. And, and I, I just... There's players you see and you think, yeah, but I just don't see this. I don't see 50 odd million pounds for this player. I really do not see it at all. And this is someone who was at, at the top club in England, Chelsea, playing there and didn't, didn't click. It's not, you know, so he's, he's played here before at a top team with top players. I, I, honestly, Jeff, I, can't, I, I, can't, I, I thought it was Lira. You thought it was Lira. Why? Why would we be spending Turkish money for a, for a from a German football club from a, an English football club for a Belgian player? Why would Turkish currency come into it? I have no idea. Classic, classic Sky Sports archive that was reporting on Kevin De Bruyne, the signing of Kevin De Bruyne, and how they thought that this man is a guaranteed flop, a flop of the highest caliber. I mean. You don't get much more wrong than that, do you, really? This wrong, in fact. So I'll put his stats on the board just to remind everyone what this guy's all about. For Manchester City, this is 360 appearances, 27,034 uh, minutes, 97 goals, and 155 assists. 155 assists! That's an outrageous amount of goal involvement. It really is. And I mean, 97 goals. We're, we could see him hit that century mark this season. I would not be surprised to see him broach that century mark and get his 100th Manchester City goal. And he's not even about goals. 
no one really talks about the goals that he gets. He gets goals, of course he does, and people brush them over a little bit and talk about his ability to find players, you know, the likes of Erling Haaland and supplying Sergio Aguero all those times. And yeah, understandable, because 155 assists speaks volumes to that. But what's scary about what the Sky Sports pundits were saying was that this man's coming from Wolfsburg and they don't get it. He had 57 goal involvements in 73 appearances at Wolfsburg. So it's not like he was doing shit before he joined, before he joined City. We signed him for a reason. And it didn't take a, a rocket scientist or a brain surgeon to work out that, that this man is of the highest calibre and he's on the up and up. And I mean, it was one of the biggest flops of Sky Sports ever. And there's a reason why people now flood to YouTube to hear what fans have to say and how the experts aren't quite the experts that they claim to be in truth. And why the football fan who lives and breathes football, who wake up every single day and just study the game and enjoy, absorb as much information around their football club as they possibly can. And that's why people come to channels like this. I'm glad you're here if you're still here in this part of the video, as well as all the other YouTube channels on their respective football clubs that they're reporting on and, and talking about and the fan channels out there in the YouTube community and why they are slowly starting to get more respect th than these so-called experts are getting and why Sky Sports have cottoned onto it as well. They've even made their own social Saturday program for every Saturday morning. They bring on YouTubers to hear what they've got to say and it's proven to be quite a popular program. For very good reason, because the, 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 the people might not agree with everybody that goes on to that show. I personally disagree with the majority of people that go on that show, but there'll be plenty of people that do agree, agree with them, and they make good points for their particular argument. You might not agree with it, but when they come out with absolute waffle like this on Sky Sports, there's a reason why that, that industry is slowly decaying in the background and YouTube and, and fan opinions are starting to have more oomph. Do you know what I mean? But back to Kevin De Bruyne, the, the, the great news is that there is rumours of a £1 million per week offer from Saudi Arabia. And I mean, he's currently on £375,000 a week right now and he's got 18 months left on his contract, which is a huge amount of time, so no need to absolutely panic. But the £1 million a week is, I mean, that turns anybody head, anybody's head. You know, you're trebling your wage, more than trebling your wage, in fact, oh, nearly, um, to go and play in Saudi Arabia. But there is so many players that are going over there and not quite in, seeing it as the experience that they thought it might be. Jordan Henderson is the prime example right now that Jordan Henderson immediately wants to come back. And that's such an, that's a whole, that's a topic for another day. What an embarrassing transfer saga that's become for him with being the, the champion behind the rainbow laces and the, uh, the gay pride side of things and being the, the, the face of that in the football community at times to then go over into a country where homosexuality is illegal is <laughs> is pretty that alone is embarrassing and then to come back within six months is like oh I mean to, with talk about coming back to, with your tail tucked firmly between your legs that's embarrassing Kevin De Bruyne I like to think has the insight and intelligence to not do that, as well as he's, he's openly stated how happy he is in Manchester and how much he's enjoyed his family time during the five-month period in which he wasn't available to play during this injury uh, throughout this season. Now he's back. He's clearly a family man. He wants to stay at Manchester. He's 32 years old, so how long will the contract be? Simon Mullock is suggesting one more year. That would take him to the summer of 2026, which is great. That would then become a decade of service at Manchester City, which is incredible. I mean, you're looking at another statue, aren't you? We're running out of space for statues of players. The the club that has no legends, apparently, we are or no history. We are in the history right now. We are living in the history. In a, in a decade, in two decades, three decades, however long, we'll look back at players like this and go, wow. Wow, what players they were. The one concern is that one year. If it is one year, don't make the Gundogan mistake. Unless Kevin De Bruyne is happy with the one year, then give him the one year. But if he wants the two, give him the two. Because that was the biggest mistake I think City made in the summer. Was the Gundogan contract saga. Which was reported to, to be that he wanted two years. City were only prepared to pay one. 
year ad additional contract. He then said, well, I want the security. I want to know where my future is long, a little bit more long term than that. And off he went to Barcelona, which is a real shame. And he's doing really well over there. And we're missing a player like Gundogan. Oh, we were missing a player like Gundogan. I think Kovacic is starting to shine a little bit. Maybe Mateus Nunes can step up to the plate as well. We're not feeling the the gun the the void and absence of Gundogan quite as much in recent weeks. Earlier on in the season, we were a little bit, but I would have loved to have said at the start of the season, we've got Gundogan as well as Kevin De Bruyne for two more years. That would be absolutely fantastic. Hopefully. We can see Kevin De Bruyne start against Spurs this Friday. I'll be doing a watch long, so come and join me for that. Really excited to get back onto the live streams, which I haven't done one in quite some time. Um, Spurs, horrible game. We're going to need players like Kevin De Bruyne. Spurs is that bogey side. I'll be doing a preview before the game. Like I said, I'll be doing a watch long, so come and join me for that. What do you think about this news? Fantastic news for Manchester City fans. It feels like we deserve a bit of good news after the weekend we had to put up with of all our rivals celebrating, but it's good to see that Kevin De Bruyne has, hasn't had his head turned by Saudi Arabia and the intentions are to stay at Manchester City, which is fantastic news. What do you think? Get in the comments below. I want to hear your thoughts. Like and subscribe. Typical City is the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. This is Typical City now.